This video will show you how to build an entity relationship diagram using Workbench. To build an ERD on Workbench, you do not need the MySQL server running. To start building your ERD, click on the plus icon in the Models section of the Workbench home screen. The first thing you should do is to give your schema a proper name. Right click on the default schema name MyDB and choose Edit Schema. Now pick and type a name that you think clearly and accurately identifies your schema. This will become the name of your database. Click the little X at the corner of the tab to close the Edit Schema window. Next you need to add a diagram to your schema. This will serve as your canvas on which you will build the ERD. Click on the Add Diagram icon and the new diagram canvas will open. Now you can add the first entity or the first table to your ERD. Click on the Place a new table icon and click on wherever you want to place your entity on the ERD canvas. Double click on the new entity. This will open a window at the bottom of the screen where you can edit the name of the entity and add attributes to it. My first entity is Customers. To add attributes to the Customers entity, I click on the first cell under the Column Name column. Workbench will automatically suggest a name for the primary key column. You can keep that name or assign a different name to this attribute. When you finish typing the attribute name and click on the next row, the first attribute will be defined as a primary key column and as not null. Note the boxes checked next to the attribute name. If you want to assign this attribute a data type that is different than the default type assigned, you can type it under the data type column or select it from the drop down menu under the data type column. You may want to define an attribute as unsigned if it will only take positive numeric values. Primary key columns that will be assigned consecutive numeric values must be defined as auto increment. You can now move on to adding the other attributes to this entity. Remember to define attributes that must have a value for each instance of the entity as not null. Workbench assigns 45 as the default maximum number of characters in a variable character column. However, you can change that value. For attributes that may have undefined values, do not check the not null checkbox. If you want to delete an attribute you have added, right-click on the attribute name and choose Delete Selected. You can now add the next entity. Click on the new table icon and click on the ERD canvas. This second one will be the orders entity. Double-click the new entity to edit the entity name and add the attributes following the steps we followed for the customer's entity. I will use the date data type for order date and set it as not null so that each order has an order date defined. We can now add a relationship between these two entities. Click on the new one to many non identifying relationship icon. When inserting a one to many relationship, you should first click on the child entity and then on the parent entity. Adding the relationship will insert the primary key attribute of the parent entity into the child entity as a foreign key attribute. Workbench will automatically assign a name for this new attribute by combining the name of the parent entity and the name of the primary key attribute. You can change this name if you prefer using a different pattern for attribute names. Note that the data type and other characteristics of the primary key attribute are applied to the new foreign key attribute. We can continue adding more entities and relationships in the same manner. The next entity I will add is Clerks. Then I will add another one to many relationship between Clerks and Orders. Next I will add an Inventory Items entity. The relationship between Orders and Inventory Items is many to many. An order can include multiple items and an item can go into multiple orders. To add this relationship Click on the Many to Many Identifying Relationship icon. Click on Inventory Items and then on Orders. You will see an associative entity is inserted between the two entities. 
This new entity will become a joint table in the physical database. Instead of adding a many-to-many -many relationship, Workbench will automatically add two one-to-many relationships between the associative entity and each of inventory items and orders. Workbench will assign a name to the new entity, but you can change that if you prefer another name. You can also change the names Workbench assigned to the primary key attributes of this new entity and change their order as necessary. You can add other non-key attributes to this new entity as well. Since the relationships around the associative entity are identifying relationships, the primary keys of the parent entities are used as both foreign keys and parts of the primary key in the line items child entity. Another approach would be introducing a separate primary key attribute into the line items entity and using the order ID and item ID attributes only as foreign key attributes in this entity. Note that the relationships around the line items entity are now shown in dashed lines, which denote non-identifying relationships. You can revert back to identifying relationships by deleting the new line item ID attribute and once again marking the order ID and item ID attributes as primary key attributes. Don't forget to save your ERD using a clear and accurate name.